Okay, so I'm about to countersink all the holes in the rudder trailing edge wedge. The trick to this is holding the wedge so that the countersink cutter comes down perpendicular to the face that you're countersinking into. Uh, because it's a wedge, if you were to lay it flat on a table, the top surface would not be perpendicular to uh, the countersink bit coming down. So I've got this uh, sort of makeshift jig that I've set up on my drill press table. It's similar to what Vans describes as one way to do this in section five of the plans. So I've got uh, two strips of aluminum here that are the same thickness as the thick edge of the wedge. And then this thinner piece that acts as a shim uh, and everything's perfectly spaced uh, and clamped down so that when you fit the wedge in here and hold it you know, up against this guide, uh, it's perfectly flat and everything's level and, you know, put a straight edge across there and it's all going to remain perfectly uh, flat and perpendicular to the cutter. So it's all set up. I'm ready to go. I've got the countersink cutter, uh, or the countersink cage rather, wired to the post of the drill press and that's to keep it from rotating anywhere beyond about that. And that's so that I can see in uh, through this hole here and you know, just, just to help get a good view of guiding the, uh, the pilot of the cutter into the pilot hole that I'm countersinking. Uh, I left these strips a little bit long. Um, one re you know, there's really no reason to cut them off. And I also uh, clamped these little blocks of wood, these little scrap pieces of wood here. And that just acts as support, you know, especially when I'm near one end or the other, just additional support for this you know, long, strip. The, uh, these, these holes that I'm countersinking are to accept the dimple in the rudder skin, and so they need to be a little bit deeper than you would normally go for just the head of a flush rivet. Uh, I've got my countersink cage set up for basically seven clicks past, uh, or seven clicks deeper than, uh, than flush for a rivet, and that's not quite deep enough to accept the whole dimple in the skin, but it's the rule of thumb that uh, Vans recommends for a dimpled skin. From what I've read, uh, one of the reasons for that is even though when you're test fitting, the skin won't quite sit down in the dimple enough to eliminate all gap between the, the part and the skin itself, when the rivet is set and, and squeezed, everything will squeeze together pretty well and you get better contact between the the actual inside of the dimple and the, the uh, countersink and the rivet and you know when the shank of the rivet expands you just get a stronger uh, a stronger bond so that's how I've got it set up so uh, that's about it there's about 60 or 70 holes or so per side and I've got to do uh, both sides so I better get started Yeah. Perfect. So I'm making pretty good progress here and do uh, five or ten holes and uh, then I pull it out and drop a rivet in there and try to measure the depth just to make sure I'm being consistent. So the little tub of pink stuff here is uh, bow lube. It's kind of a waxy lubricant made by Boeing. I'm just putting it on the countersink cutter. So now I'm checking the depth again here after a few more, and I decide to start fiddling around with the countersink cage. And I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end.
So now I've flipped it over and I'm working my way along the other side. All right, so there it is. So, both sides. Okay, so that's it. Uh, the trailing edge wedge is countersunk. Everything, uh, the jig worked really well. The only real trouble I ran into was um, pretty much self-inflicted. I, I should have done more drilling and less checking, I think, because uh, what I would do is I'd countersink a few of them and then I'd pull it away and plop a rivet in there and try and measure it with uh, the depth gauge on this, hoping to see seven thousandths. And the truth is, it's really hard to get a good reading with that thing, at least for me, uh, in, this, you know, in this kind of situation. And so there were a couple of times where I sort of got myself into a, you know, mental tailspin where I thought, ah, you know, I'm, I'm going a little too deep. Maybe I'll adjust this and back it out. And so I would do that and then check another couple and decide, nope, I need to just put it back the way I had it. So I should have left well enough alone and just shot, you know, gone for consistency, right? I think that's the more important thing. And, but overall, they, they are very consistent. I'm really happy. Um, you know, the holes are, uh, the countersinks are circular. I didn't get any kind of wandering around of this guy, no trilobe thing going on. So um, they all look good. They all look consistent. I uh, fitted it up against one of the pieces, of, you know, one of the skins, and they, it seems to sit nice and flat. Everything lines up perfectly. Uh, the, the, there really isn't very much of a gap. Um, so... You know, I think they're certainly deep enough, and uh, it, it's it's a very consistent line. So, all in all, I'm really happy with the result. I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna clean all this up and get ready for priming, which I hope to start tomorrow. accurate enough in terms of the tool itself is reasonable or not since it just broke <laughs> 